are you? Have you ever had that experience where you get butterflies in your stomach or felt an uneasiness in your stomach? Maybe to the point of feeling like you're going to get sick? Researchers call this the enteric nervous system. We'll call it the ENS. It's our little brain. The ENS is that gut feeling you get when you experience something in the pit of your stomach. It doesn't appear to be capable of thought, but it does communicate back and forth with our big brain and results in extravagant ways. So that's what I'd like to talk about today. Here we go. An emotional shift can occur when you're experiencing issues like IBS, for example, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, pain, and stomach upset, plagueis. Then anxiety and depression contribute to these problems. Researchers are showing that irritation in the gastrointestinal system may be sending signals to the central nervous system that triggers mood changes. So it's not necessarily that your anxiety or depression causes IBS. It could be the other way around. It's also believed that the digestive system activity might be affecting our cognition our thinking skills and memory. More research on this is in Researchers the Researchers are looking at other health conditions like type two diabetes and how the interactions between our nerve signals, our gut hormones and microbiota, the bacteria that live in the digestive system, interact to raise or reduce Our risk. digestive system is constantly changing due to eating, replication, and metabolism of microorganisms, and pharmaceutical treatments. Our gut is also shaped by our culture, our social environment, and has a unique signature. To deal with this changing environment, our gut has developed sensing mechanisms to accurately detect and respond to the contents in our enteric system. Peripheral sensing is relayed to the brain through the central nervous system, where these signals are interrupted by the brain. Our enteric nervous system is how this sensing is transported. There are over 200 to 600 million neurons in the enteric nervous system, which is equal to the number of neurons in the spinal cord. In the gut, an integration of signals from nerves with intraendocrine and immune and epithelial defense systems are involved in carrying all of the signals. Enteroendocrine cells our specialized cells found in the gastrointestinal tract, the stomach and pancreas. In addition to our gut function of digestion and assimilation of nutrients, endocrine tissues are involved in the regulation of energy balance. This regulation is carried out by endocrine hormones secreted by endocrine cells in the gastrointestinal tract. As well as several neural pathways that communicate information from the signals responsible for the regulation of food intake and energy expenditure and in response to changes in energy status. What does that mean? Well, Hormones that are produced in the intestinal tract 
are secreted by the gut, pancreas, and liver. This can regulate body weight by the mechanisms that affect not just our food intake, but our energy homeostasis and fat storage. It's those hormones that affect our hunger. Energy intake, energy expenditure, and as a result, body weight are tightly regulated. That's why lifestyle interventions, which I'll cover in a moment, are important and why sitting still complicates things. Clinical trials of pharmacological agents that help those with a metabolic syndrome are looking at drugs to help improve weight loss above those currently on the market. An important hormone found in the stomach is called ghrelin, which can be secreted to increase our appetite and food intake. It can cross our blood-brain barrier into the hypothalamus in the brain, which regulates our food intake. It also has an effect on our stress response, our anxiety, and depression. I'm still not eating sugar or sugary foods to the best of my ability. I've lost 21 pounds. I have to tell myself that I don't want that second helping of whatever it is that I'm eating. And over time, I've found myself feeling fuller sooner. I don't snack after supper, and that works for me. And I try very hard not to skip meals. But I also don't overeat. I rarely eat bread. I put either almond milk or coconut milk in my coffee. I'm drinking decaffeinated coffee, which that was a huge, huge step for me. I put stevia in my coffee instead of sugar. I do like it to be a little bit sweet tasting. And that's what's worked for me. In fibromyalgia, there are dense connections in the cerebellum and right inferior parietal lobe, among other areas, compared to healthy controls, where there are dense connections in the prefrontal cortex regions. The cerebellum helps with coordination and movement, especially in the hands and feet. It helps maintain posture, balance, and equilibrium. The right inferior parietal lobe is involved in a diverseness of mental processes like basic attention and language to social interaction and the interpretation of sensory information, as well as semantic memory, which is our conscious long-term memory, like the collection of facts that we gather from the time we were young not associated with emotion or personal experience. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I forget words, and we all know our sensory input is kabooey. So what's the answer? People with Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, chronic pancreatitis, IBS, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, can benefit from current psychotherapies to ease their symptoms. Relaxation therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, gut-directed relaxation training, and biofeedback could ease your symptoms, as well as mood, quality of life, stress, anxiety, and other physical symptoms are found to improve the gut-brain symptoms. 
It's believed that medication to treat the bowel are also helping the central nervous system calm down. So when you take an antidepressant for IBS, it's not because your gastroenterologist thinks it's all in your head, but because in some cases, the medication also works on nerve cells in the gut. Our two brains talk to each other. Ghrelin levels increase when we're on a diet and not eating enough calories, avoiding an empty stomach, and eating a nutrient-rich diet may help ghrelin secretion. Eat vegetables of all types, whole fruits, whole grains, low-fat dairy, lean protein, and olive oil, and oils found in nuts and fatty fish. Fiber-rich foods are shown to reduce ghrelin levels. Men who ate eggs for breakfast compared to men who ate bagels were found to have lower ghrelin levels. The interaction between the gut and brain is phenomenal. To reduce the amount of ghrelin, the hunger hormone it's called, in our body, a person should eat healthy, fiber-rich foods, consume adequate amounts of protein, exercise, and there's that word, get enough sleep, and minimize stress. So this is a list of the things that will lower ghrelin levels. I hope you learned something. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. And please subscribe, share my videos, and like it. I really appreciate it. Have a blessed day. in the enteric nervous system in the gut and the epithelial tablet our stress response it also has a the right inferior per, to social gastroesophageal response And the ground.